Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your fifth REST API tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about how to handle requests in Express. Okay then, so now we've set up our Express app which is listening for requests, we can start to set up our routes and create route handlers. So how can Express allow us to do this? Well, it's pretty simple. When we created an app variable right there by setting it equal to Express, the function, it handed over to us a load of HTTP methods such as get, post, delete, etc. that we can use on it to listen for such requests. So for example, if I just come down here and I type app.get and then I'm going to specify in quotations the root level, then this is now listening for get requests to just forward slash. So localhost port 4000 forward slash. So it's listening out for that get request. Okay. But how does it respond to that get request? Well, we can pass in as a second uh, parameter to this function, a callback function right here. And then inside this callback function, we can do something. So now the app is listening for this request at the root level. If someone makes that request, that get request, then it can respond in this function. So for example, I could just log a message in this function. I'll say console.log get request. Okay, so now in our console, if we make this request, we should see this, right? So let's just make that request. I'm going to say localhost. In fact, first of all, we need to run this. So I'm just going to control C to get out of that and say node index again, just so it's listening. There we go. And then I'll go to localhost colon 4000, just forward slash the root level. And we should get a log right there saying get request. Okay, so cool. So now the app express has responded to this get request, but it's not really responded. It's just logged a message. And if you notice over here in the browser, it's still spinning around. It's still waiting for an actual response. So we've not really responded to the request. We've just done something. We've just logged to the console. So the reason this is still spinning is because it's waiting for that response. So we need to send it a response or at least end the response. Okay, that's the way it works. We send a request to a server, the server then responds to the client. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, when we use this callback function right here, we can pass along a couple of parameters, the request parameter and the response parameter. So this request parameter is going to contain information about the request made. So if we sent something in the body um, or anything like that, then this is going to contain that information. And the response object is going to contain information about the response. We can set the status code or send some data to the client, that kind of thing. All right. So if we want to end this response, the easiest way to do it is by saying res for response, this object right here, dot end. And now if I save this, I'm just going to come back over here and I'm going to cancel out of this and then do it again because we've made a change. So I'll say node index. Now, if you check this out, if we refresh, we still get that message, right? But now it's stopped spinning. And yep, it says this site can't be reached. We're not sending it anything like a web page or any data or anything like that, but at least we've ended the response. So it's no longer spinning around waiting for anything to happen. Make sense? Cool. So that's how we handle a get request. And one thing to note, when we're requesting in the browser right here, I said this in an earlier tutorial, this is automatically making a get request, which is why this is responding to it, because we're listening for get request. If this was listening for a post request and we do it to the same URL in here, it's not going to work, right? But we'll get on to post and put and things like that later on. So we've got our function firing when we make a request here. And by the way, if we change this to API, for example, then this is only going to work when we go to forward slash API. Okay, makes sense. So this is the route that we're listening for, if you like, for the get request. So anyway, what we would ideally like to do in a get request handler is send back some data, right? That's what it's for. If we make a get request, we're actually after something. We want to retrieve some data. So how do we do that? Well, when we get on to creating the project properly later, what we're going to be doing is interacting with a database within this function. So we're going to be getting the data we need from the database and then sending that back. But since we're not doing that in the database just yet, what we'll do is just send back some dummy data. So instead of end right here, 
tack on an S at the front. Now we got send. So now we're sending data to the client. Okay. So we'll send back an object, some JSON, a pretend ninja, if you like. So let's just give this a name property. And I'm going to call this Yoshi. And that's all we need to do. This is just an example. So now if I save this, if I go to forward slash API, this function is going to fire and then it's going to console log this message. Then it's going to send the response and the response it's going to send is this object right here. So we should get this in the browser. So let's now run this one more time. I'm going to say node index and navigate to forward slash API this time. And just as a heads up, if I just go to forward slash again, this is no longer going to work. It's going to say cannot get. We've not set up a handler for just forward slash anymore. We changed it right here to forward slash API. So now we need to go to forward slash API. And now we see this object, or I do, you might not because it's so small, but if I zoom in, you can see name Yoshi. So we're receiving that object back now, right? So there we go. That is how we handle a request. And like I said, we can handle these different requests like post, put, delete, etc. And the way we do it is by just changing the verb or the method right here. So instead of get, we'd say post or put, etc. or delete. Right. So when we receive a delete request to forward slash API, then we fire this function. Or if we receive a post request to forward slash API, we fire this function. Right. So we can separate all these out and deal with them independently. But we're going to learn more about post and put and delete in the next tutorial. For now, just know that we handle our requests like this. So we have the method. Then we have the route and then we have the callback function, which, we uh, which receives these two object request and response. Then we can send a response right here and send some data with it. OK, so in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at setting up all of our routes for get, post, etc. And uh, delve a little more deeply into those.